When I hit the wall about 15 years ago and got deeply, darkly, dangerously depressed and wound up in the hospital, it set me on a journey of, of hope and healing and it gave me a bag, a toolbox that has sustained me now for quite some time, even through the death of my husband and brokenness of relationships and, and, and in, in the quarantine and all that, those sets of tools still work. And the number one tool, of course, was my, is my relationship with the Lord. This is CIA, Contagious Influencers of America. I'm David Sands. And I'm Victoria Robinson. Well, we uh, we had to have her back. We had to. She was with us before, and we got... Actually, I think it's our number one podcast so far. I think we just hit 70 episodes. Wow. You know, this gal, I almost gave her away. What better time than now to have the number one female comedian in the world? Yeah, we need to laugh more, don't we? Oh, you think? We have Shonda Pierce with us. Shonda is starring in a movie called Selfie Dad, which is uh, going to be online. I guess that's the, the only way you can see a movie now. Pretty much. Well, there are some theaters opening up. You know, you know what's weird about this whole theater thing? <laughs> I hear that you have to wear a mask. In a theater. In a theater. And uh, there's the social distancing thing. Right. Apparently, in some states, they're, they're putting down seat covers. Uh, between shows like a, some kind of a either a paper thing or it just seems to me like a, a bunch of nonsense i mean look I, I shouldn't say nonsense i'm i'm sure that there's a reason for it but it seems like a lot of work when you could just sit at home in and your underwear <laughs> and watch on your you know 70 inch tv i just had a vision of what if you're going on a first date and you're meeting at the movie theater, you can't even sit beside the person. So what do you wave at them from across the way? I think if they're with you, you're, you you can sit next to them. Okay, but if you're both coming and meeting there, <laughs> you have to show proof. I mean, that's crazy. But how do you, how do you eat popcorn with a mask on? <laughs> that's a good point. That's a good yeah. point. Well, Shonda is starring in uh, this uh, movie with Michael Jr. Yeah, that's right. Called Selfie Dad. That will be online, or it is online, so uh, make sure you check that out. I'd love to sit here and to promote her live shows, but uh, unfortunately... There aren't any right now. <laughs> but you know what? We love Shonda. We're personal friends with her, both David and I. She's one of a kind, and we know she's going to be one of your good friends, too. Here she is. I've been doing all these interviews, and I'm like... Everybody's talking about, oh my gosh, I haven't got out of my house for three months. And some of these are going to play like two months from now. Yeah. <laughs> I go, wow, what's wrong with them? They're claustrophobic. <laughs> That's funny. Oh my gosh. You know, what uh, a world we're in. I was talking to Joe, Tad, yeah. and he was like, uh, I had Matthew West over at my house last week. I watched that. It was good. And, and Matthew did like a little concert for me in the backyard afterwards, right? Yeah. Joe says, you know what? These people have nothing to do. All summer long, you ought to just have people showing up in your backyard and doing a it's backyard right. concert for you and invite a couple of your neighbors. That's <laughs> right. Well, my promoter, you know, Newsboys, uh, he also does Toby Mac and all that. Well, they're going to do a series of drive-in movie theaters and, and Smitty, and that's great. So they're thinking of including me, you know, we, maybe we do your tour like that. I go, no. What are they? Flash your lights if you think I'm funny. Comedy will not work in a movie, drive in movie theater, you know, and nobody's going to break out in the back seat unless I'm there, you know? Right. So it's like, no, it's it just, I would rather wait till we all just get, I get to go back to work, you know? Yeah, but let's say we find out that we can't do that for another two years. Yeah. How do you reinvent yourself? Not yourself, but how do you reinvent, no, how do you get out there? No. <laughs> Why would you do that? <laughs> you know, financially, I'm blessed. I can maybe do this another year. But then I will have to think about, I go, maybe I'm going to have to sell the farm. You know, I'm going to have to do something. I think for me, I think I, I think it's I think it's going. I, and maybe I'm just an optimist. I think we're all, I think we're going to be fine. Mm -hmm. uh, more and more is going to come out that, oh, asymptomatic people now are, you know, contagious, blah, blah, blah. Okay, great. By September... I think I'll sell tickets and the church will be full. I think you'll be going door to door. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're a pessimist. <laughs> <laughs> My 
kind of drive-in comedy would be. I'll just sit in one spot and you drive your car by and I'll tell you a joke <laughs> as a car pulls up. And next car, next car. Drive-by you know? comedy. Exactly, drive-by. <laughs> Instead of dry bar, it's a drive-by. <laughs> it is. Uh, they're, you know, everybody's thinking of inventive ways to get back to work and do this and that and the other. I... I just want to see the whites of people's eyes and make them laugh, and I, you know, I, and put some of this behind us. Um, I and I don't know, maybe I'm, and I could be wrong, but I refuse to give to cave that this is the end of the world. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. now I think Jesus is coming back any any minute, but I, but I refuse to cave into the that to allow this to uproot everything that we've done as human beings. And all the strides that we made as as entertainers, you know, and and it, you know, some reinvention is probably good. You rethink your storylines. You you know, you evaluate where you've been, where you're headed. But I but as far as what I do for a living, it has to include people being in the room. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know that that's the hard part about comedy. You know, I do. There's a lot of little comedy clubs opening up again, and they're social distancing the cha- tables and chairs like they do, you know, restaurants now. But as far as Shonda Pierce concerts, I don't know. You know, I had, I was blessed. Almost the whole tour was selling out and many shows had already sold out. And then this, the quarantine hit. And so we've still got people waiting with their tickets in their hands somewhere, you know, so we got to figure out how to, how to deliver to them. So we're looking at options. You know, a lot of option is you go to the same building and you do the show twice. So half of the room can come in at one hour and half the room comes in, you know, a few hours later. See how that's going. But, well, when was the last time you played to half of a room? Oh, gosh. I know. That's what's, that's what's so, you know. You really have I'm to adjust, so readjust your, yeah. Oh, and your timing. You have to readjust your timing and your, you know, and I, and I do realize how spoiled I got. I mean, really spoiled at, at big, giant crowds and hearty laughs, you know. Maybe we just have to mic the audience so I will feel like I'm effective. <laughs> 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 it is certainly um, all of this. All of this has been a game in the mind. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, keeping your mind active, uh, keeping your mind encouraged. So how, how have you done that? Uh, a lot of things, you know, I have my, uh, I have my, my sets of tools, you know, and for the most part, they work. Um, I'm blessed. When I hit the wall about 15 years ago and got deeply, darkly, dangerously depressed and wound up in the hospital, it set me on a journey of, of hope and healing. And it gave me a bag, a toolbox that has sustained me now for quite some time, even through the death of my husband and brokenness of relationships and 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 in, in the quarantine and all that, those sets of tools still work. And the number one tool, of course, was my, is my relationship with the Lord, that it has to stay alive and active. Um, and, and, and that looks like many things. That's surrounding yourself with positivity. That's keeping the radio, listen to keep the faith every week, you know. It is... Uh, positive music. I'm sure my neighbors think Kirk Franklin and his whole choir live in my bathroom because <laughs> I crank it up so loud. You know, I, on dark days, uh, you know, for, for example, today we're talking, it's a little overcast outside. I have one button on my wall I can push and every single light in my house comes on. And it, this condo looks like a lighthouse up here. You know, it's so bright. But those are, those are the tricks of the trade is keep all the lights bright and, you know, because your, your mindset, your eyes will start seeing the gloom and the doom, and then that seeps into your thinking. And so you keep all the lights on. You keep bright, wonderful, fun music playing. Um, you have to stay physically active, you know, and sometimes it's a matter of walking back and forth down the hall a few times a week if that's the only time I can get out. Um, and so you do all those things. It is stay away from Facebook, stay away from negative post, um, turn off the news. Um, it's, it's, you know, you, you do all those things. And what I say to a lot of people is go and get a stack of post-it notes. It's your best tool in your arsenal is your post-it notes and think of the best day of your life. 
tell me what that the most fun day of your life and you've got one somebody's you've always got one write that down um and then but what's a great favorite song write write a lyric or a line from a song that you love what's a verse or two that you love then you take those post-it notes and you stick it all over your refrigerator or your mirror or wherever you're going to look to you know on, on a regular basis for me the refrigerator you know, the, I had the COVID-19 pounds that you... Yeah, I, I, I've been looking at the refrigerator too much. <laughs> yeah, and so all that to say, you put those post-it notes on your refrigerator. And when you do that, you have placed before you a pattern of successes and joys, and and you've placed before you a, 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 a pattern of gratitude. Um, and you keep your eyes focused on those things. Because let me tell you, if you had a good day, you will have another one. And so then you write that you write all those positive things down that you see. We're so quickly to write down our prayer requests. And I have a prayer jar, you know, when things get so heavy and I want to get it off my mind. If I write it down, I stick it in that prayer jar. Um, but it, it, all of that to say, if we begin to focus on the pattern of goodness in our lives, instead of the pattern of what everything is when everything's going wrong. Earlier this year when this all started and uh, they were basically telling us to uh, uh, <laughs> literally lock ourselves in, in, <laughs> hot, in our closets, don't go outside, don't go jogging, don't take the dog out, just let him pee on the carpet. Yes. I, mean, I mean, it was like cra- it was crazy, frightening. right? Yeah. I started putting pee pads on my little balcony. I mean, I had to. <laughs> Because <laughs> it's like now I'm afraid of my neighbors. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. What went through your mind the first couple of weeks? Did you think, "Oh my gosh, uh, th- this is the end of life as I know it"? W- were you freaking out? Um, no. To tell you the truth, I'll be honest with you. I I didn't believe it, and I still have a hard time believing it. Um, I'm a I am an avid researcher you know what i mean when i'm in a good space in my mind then i'll dive in and online i'll go to this article and to that i have a handful of people in in the presidential administration i have uh committees that i'm on that i i have conference calls every week with the white house uh with different groups that i'm a part of and i really try to research for myself and to be honest with you and I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I don't know what, how I feel about getting a vaccine. And I don't know that Bill Gates is the Antichrist. You know, everybody <laughs> went around. I had a girlfriend, you know Bill Gates is the Antichrist. I go, no, he's not, because you just said he was, and we're not supposed to know who it was. You know, um, all that to say, I, I don't know about all that. I'm not a scientist, but I do believe my heart and my gut, and it's never failed me. When the Holy Spirit has spoken into my heart, he has never failed me. And all I kept hearing at the beginning of this and all through it was, do not be afraid, that this too shall pass, that I really believe a lot of us obloviated uh, for the control. Um, The draining of the swamp is not popular. Mm -mm, mm -mm. And when people start swirling down into that drain, Mm -hmm. they start clawing. And I think a lot of the scare and the panic was the clawing effect of people not wanting to go down the drain. And that is, I I can't prove that. I mean, a lot of people can, you know what I mean? But uh, in my personal opinion, as Shonda Pierce, not a part of Keep the Faith. But I'm telling you, David, I uh, I think so much of it was blown up out of the hatred for the man in the office. And same thing with the racial tension, the, uh, you know, the the rioting, um, the groups like Antifa, these are people that hate conservative value, and they will do whatever they can to disrupt where we are in this country, what's going on in the White House. That's a shame. And they'll do it, uh, irregardless of the loss of life and the loss of your business and the loss of the economy. The economy was soaring. Jobs were better than it's ever been. There was so much good going on. And there was no, they couldn't, they couldn't get the man on this whole Russian thing. They couldn't, you know, they, there's a whole list of things. They went after him and, and didn't, and it didn't work. And so when or if this little virus thing came around, man, there was something they could jump on. Now, and I know there were a great loss of life and that's, you know, loss of any life is terrible. But we lose a lot of people in this life 
to cancer and the flu and and you know we the whole list goes on and on ba more babies are born every month you know i mean ma more babies are killed through abortion than than the people that died from covid some 60,000 people lost their lives of the flu this past season right i'm like don't their lives matter right I mean, exactly right. you know, everybody keeps talking about the hundred plus thousand right. from COVID-19. Right. But look how many of the flu kills. You know, I live in a very small town. We have two traffic lights. Mm -hmm. uh, we're trying to get a third. That's, <laughs> we're really growing. But uh, we have one big store. It's a Walmart. And every now and then the schools will be closed because of the flu in the wintertime. They'll have a, a bad spell of the flu. And when that goes on, and I don't go to the high school, you know, I, I'm not in and out of the school system at all. But when they announced that on our little Facebook pages, you know, for our county, I'm kind of a little more cautious when I go to Walmart. I take that little sanitizer thing and I wipe down the, I almost do that every day anyway. I wipe down the, the you know, the cart and throw it, throw it away. I use my hand sanitizer and if I go to a restaurant um, during those times when I know that the flu bug is running around in our county. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think what was terrible is that the loss of business and and the fear that came into people's lives because of of all of that craziness you know that quarantine brings now at the same time did it flatten the curve did it look like it worked yeah it looked like a lot people a lot less people were getting it um but i do i'm sick to my stomach to think we started shutting down church and we should have been sanitizing nursing homes you know we should have gone straight to where the most vulnerable of us live um rather than worrying about those who worship together did it flatten a curve on your dating life <laughs> <laughs> no that was already run over that has been so flat for so long you know uh, but when the quarantine first came along they started talking about quarantine and quarantine i go what do you mean quarantine social distancing that is my dating life you know <laughs> I've been socially distanced for five years, so. <laughs> you, you, were all, you already had those tools all it's, down. <laughs> you know, it is, um, it's almost, um, it, you know, it used to be funny and great material, the online dating stuff. I had, you know, a good hour-long set about my dating life. Then it starts not getting so funny when there isn't a dating life, and now it's just sad. <laughs> You're, you haven't gotten into Zoom dating? I don't Zoom date. I don't Zoom. Are you kidding me? That's hilarious. Zoom date. I don't even, I don't text somebody, much less Zoom date. <laughs> it is, um, you know, that's one thing I didn't have to worry about. I didn't have to lament I can't see my boyfriend. <laughs> I do think, and, and I don't mean this in some kind of martyrdom way, you know, it's really easy to say, you know, I've just given up on dating. It's, I'm, j I'm just not interested. I've really found peace in being alone, and I feel empowered to learn how to live by myself, and, you know, God is good. Oh, yeah, that sounds really good. The bottom line is my phone doesn't ring. So <laughs> well, I'll give you the other side of that. You're okay, good. <laughs> Uh, some of us were really fortunate to not be in quarantine with the wrong person. <laughs> oh boy, you know what? That's the truth. Can you I imagine? About. <laughs> this is, I did say this one time to somebody. I said, you know, I loved my husband very much, and I missed him. And 31 years we're married. But if I was quarantined right now with him, he would be getting on my very last nerve. So there's a real advantage that he's gone on to glory. <laughs> Because we may not have made it through the quarantine. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm a traveling comic. I've been on the road 25 years. So that's why we were married 31 years. I was hardly ever home. <laughs> I can't imagine being stuck in a house with him. <laughs> it's weird. It, it's just really weird. It's, it's, so how did, how did it affect your dating life, David? You're the big playboy out there. Hey, you know what? I The first couple of weeks, I thought, oh, my gosh my timing was so off <laughs> and then about two weeks into it I thought oh my gosh God has really God really took care of me because I don't think I would have lived through it I don't think I would have li lived through it you know so y'all would have killed each yeah. other <laughs> no I, I I well let's just say I feel very fortunate and and you know what after the first few weeks I thought this is pretty cool 
Yeah. And yeah. I had been in California for four or five weeks. And uh, let, let's just say I went through 30 days of detox. Yeah. And I went through 30 days of e- extreme therapy. Really? Yeah. Yeah, with a wonderful therapist. Uh, she is, uh, yeah, a pastor out there put me together with her, and she's kind of uh, a cross between Dr. Phil and Dr. Ruth. Oh, wow, that's awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So just and, tell it like it is. Oh, my gosh. I couldn't wait to run to the ATM every day and get money to pay her. <laughs> right? That's good, though. So, because now. Uh, by the way, I'm talking about a therapist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, let's have uh, You know, you people out in California do a little weird. The uh, And I know you will edit it. Well, well, by, by the way, I, 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 when I got back here, yeah, I literally, literally only had a couple of weeks until the quarantine, the, the, the quarantine started. So uh, can you imagine if my timing had not been just wow. right? Right. You could have been in a bad situation. Yeah, you can. Yeah. So, and it has been bad for a lot of people. For a lot of people. You know, I yeah. try to, uh, online, you know, when you're having conversation with people or they reach out to you and email you, I'm always like, are you journaling? Get that stuff out of your head, write it down, you know, all the little things. But then I'm real quick to go, but I'm not a therapist. I'm a comedian. Mm-hmm. You've got to call somebody. Now, Branches Counseling Centers that, you know, I was a part of founding with my brother, and we have several of them around the country, but... We we tried to stay open, and they did a, they did a lot of tele teletherapy, you know, online. A lot of online therapy. A lot of counselors did that. We never stopped, you know, and that got really, 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 really busy. The uh, yeah, our counselors, yeah, be, because people feel, especially those living alone, and we're just learning to live alone, you know, and and getting out kind of helped and all that. Well, then when the quarantine comes, your mind just spins down to the depths of darkness that you think this is never going to get over you know i hear my little dog yapping back in the background i know where is she oh no should i get her no okay no. Well, <laughs> yeah let's don't she'll just come in here and bark uh, yeah it it's been um th- one of the greatest things though I, I will say back to the being alone and not dating and everything i do think there is something about the lord really wanting me to learn uh to push back on any codependency left in my life, to really learn to be happy with me. And that's hard. I preach a bit good game and getting out there and being funny, it takes a little bit of cockiness, you know, and I'm real edgy on stage and everything. But truth of the matter is my very dearest girlfriends that know me, they, they check on my, my, I have a very tender heart. And, uh, and, and this has been a good, this has been good for me to know. I'm not a bad person to hang out with. I enjoy hanging out with me, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. and I talk to myself a lot, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with me all the time. <laughs> Are, uh, how, how long did it take you to, to really get comfortable with yourself or to evolve into where you are today? What was the process over the past few years? You know, I think the first year after David died, um, you got a lot of people around you energizing you and pushing you forward, and you got to be strong for your kids. You know, you're, you've, you've got that, you know, strong face. So you get through that first year. Then I think this, and I can't speak for all widows, but I've heard this a lot from widows. Then the second year, those people kind of start dying down. The kids get settled. My son gets settled. He went back to California. He was he was kind of getting his game back on. And and so then your the second year was really hard and really lonely and I gained weight you know and I was just miserable the third year you start realizing wait I you start concentrating on your own health you know for one thing I got started losing weight and I got smarter with my diet and I and I decided wait a minute this you know I don't have anyone to answer to but me and I've hated this paint color I'm gonna paint my out you just start doing some things that you always wanted to do just for you. You know, um, I remember we have a, a little farm, we call it the funny farm. And, uh, and I have little cabins in the woods and, and we always hosted missionaries and their families and pastors and their families that need a vacation and can't afford it. And it's, it's a real rustic place. It's not like it's this gorgeous ranch somewhere, you know, but it's, it's fun and it's my, my place. And, and I share it with, with as many people as possible. Um, I decided to remodel the, 
one of the cabins and I put in a jacuzzi tub and I just and I realized my husband would hate it. <laughs> <laughs> I took all the rustic out of it and it is wonderful, you know. And I gave myself permission to do that. Because the first few years you're a widow, you're just like, oh, I, to honor him, we have to keep everything so-so. And then that starts going away and going, wait a minute. And that, it was easier to start boxing up his stuff. You know, it was easier to start, hey, I want a new couch. I, want, I like this color. He would hate it. I don't care. You know, he's not here. And he would want me to be happy, you know. So that's the first, second, third year or so. Fourth or fifth year, I, I, I like me. I like where I am. I like my life. I, there's probably, there's, and I grew up very poor. And I grew up, you know, I didn't know there were seven forks you could use in a meal. You know, I, I didn't know any of that. So to this day, I still walk down this hallway into this living room sometimes. And there's probably not a time that goes by that I go, thank you, Lord, for letting me live here. This is beautiful. You know, this is beautiful. And, and I, I have adopted a spirit of gratitude rather than, um, and rather than the, the heart, you know, rather than my heart hurting over what didn't happen or what I don't have or, or lamenting, you know, um, lamentation is, it's hard, but glorification, that's, that's enlightening and fun and bright, and encouraging. Yeah. You went through this process, and now you've gone through this uh, process of really discovering who you are. You're beginning to like yourself. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know, for somebody who's really going through a period of, oh my gosh, the world has fallen apart, I've lost my job. Uh, I don't know what I can count on. I really haven't made my house payment in a couple of months. They're telling me that I might have my job back, but I'm not quite sure. You know, I, I, I was working 40 hours and I'm only working 20, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Is that sort of... Um, can That's you, stinking can, thinking. Can you, but can, <laughs> can you relate to that in any way? Yeah. Oh, Absolutely. You know, one, if I can't relate to it right this minute, I can tell you a time in my life when I was poor. I can tell you a time in my life when David and I actually prayed for groceries to come in because we had a little one, you know. I can actually tell you the times when I was so devastated by, uh, by losing a job or was holding on to a job that was not healthy or my hashtag me too moments or my uh, got taken to the cleaners by a bad manager moments. I mean, you... I just finished a book and, you know, chopping it around and it'll probably be the last book I ever write. And I, I titled it The Last Looks because that's what they say on movie sets all the time. You know, right before they shoot the scene, the director will say last looks and everybody comes out of the woodworks and fixes the last little piece of hair that's out of place or last little bit of lipstick that you need before they push record, you know. And so I, I equated that with I'm telling, I'm telling it all for the last time. And also about all the people that come in and out of the woodwork to help put me back together, you know. And so um, all that to say, when you lament that whole list that you just gave, that I'm losing my, you know, I may, what, I may not have a job, that this is going to happen, this is going to happen, somewhere you have to say stop and think of what do you need to do this day, just this day. Or even if that becomes a large picture, what do I need to do this hour? And sometimes you go hour by hour because when you are in a devastating place, it's a giant picture to try to wrap your mind around. It's a giant, it's an overwhelming to know, okay, I have to get this house payment. I don't know where it's going to come from. Okay, what can I do this hour? for that. Or maybe it's make a couple of phone calls. Maybe it's to call the mortgage company and go, I'm going to be late this month. Or can we defer this payment to, you know, to the end of the mortgage? You know, maybe. So you just take that, take one task and then you just take one hour and you live hour by hour. And, you know, I love the old hymn day by day. And with each passing moment, strength I find to meet my trials here. So it's just day by day. It's just passing moment by passing moment. Keep that focus 
And then you'll be all, you'll be shocked when you look and all of a sudden the whole day's gone by or a week's gone by and your mind is lighter. Your thinking is not as heavy and you become clearer. My brother, a long, long time ago, who's, a, you know, my brother's a great counselor. I was in college and I was overwhelmed by a task and things I had to do. And before graduation, he goes, Shonda, write down three things you've got to get done this week. And I said, okay. So I did. And, and he said, now take the first one, write down five steps that's going to help you get to that. And, and so I broke it down. And by the time I broke it all down, I, I would, then I would start that one little task that got me through the five steps that got me to that big thing I needed to do. And so you break it down in little tiny increments. Your mind can wrap around that. But if you look at the whole great big picture sometimes, it's overwhelming. And then that's easier also to live day by day, moment by moment, giving each second to the Lord. You bring up movies. <laughs> yes. So, so, so before we talk about your films, yes. uh, did you just tell me that you're now the film commissioner of your county? <laughs> My mayor called, and uh, and our our county developer guy called, and they had a fella that was interested in some land out here and wanted some tax credit information. But they didn't know a lot about the entertainment world. So, you know, since, you know, I'm the small town girl made good, they're like, you come over. And right before we went in the meeting, I goes, by the way, I appoint you now the film commissioner of the county. And I go, okay, thank you. But, you know, we all went to high school together. We're all old old people now. But, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, you know, I have, I've been in, in, in a lot of movies, and I, that surprises me to say, to tell you the truth. Very first movie I was in, I had four lines, and I. but my scene was with Fred Willard, who we lost this year. He was such a funny, funny man. He was in a Best of Show and, and you know, he was just, and Waiting for Guffman. He was just a funny man. But So, and then I did several Hallmark movies, you know, um, just small parts here and there. And I had written a couple of movies, and lo and behold, got a chance to, to see one all the way to the end. And I had the leading role in a movie that I helped write with my husband. And then a wonderful director, Chris Dowling, came along and, and really got the script in, in doable form, you know. And that was the hardest work I've ever done in my life, David. I mean, just the hardest. And I got to be in it. Yes, you were. <laughs> and you were the snotty judge. It was so much fun. It was. But I, I'm telling you, it was hard work. And I... But I loved it. I loved it. But, um, uh, uh, you know, it's been a while. It was a couple of years ago that I was in a movie with Michael Jr., who's a wonderful comic. Very, very, I mean, he's like Love him, a, a love him. Yeah, yeah, know. yeah. He's just a one-two punch, you know, stand-up comic. He's done comedy for years and years. Well, he, he had the lead in a movie called Selfie Dad. And he called me and said, would you be interested in a part? And I said, yeah, what's the part? And he goes, Oh, she's mean. <laughs> I go, I would love it. And I played such a mean bitty. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a mean person. And I loved it, though. And I would, you know, my scenes, I would stomp in there and say something ugly, you know, to Michael Jr. And then I'd, you know, you know turn around and walk out of the room. You know? <laughs> And, and Selfie Dad is now on uh, what Amazon Prime? Amazon, I think it's it's gonna it's digital release, whatever. I mean, you can't go to the movies theaters and see it, but it, it's a, it's released on Father's Day. Yeah, and it's a great story for men. I will say, if every father out there, uh, you know, g get your dad a ticket to it because he needs to see. And it's about a man who lost himself, who just got that. I think that midlife moment where you're just you're just lost somewhere in your head. You know, I remember my husband going through it. You know, he wrote a book called How to, uh, How to Kill a Zombie. And it was about his time of being just lost. You know, you just, you're floating around, you're, you're getting 45 and you think, is this all there is? And I've got kids and a mortgage. And that's kind of what this story is about, Selfie Dad. And, and uh, Michael Jr.'s character is, is finding himself again as a father and what's important uh, as, you know, in his family. And so, yeah, it's a it's a great story, but I played a snob, and every time I would say something ugly, and they would go cut, and I would go, "I am so sorry." You know, I was just <laughs> I'd be like apologizing. I didn't really mean it. I'm really not that kind of person. <laughs> and Michael Jr. would say, "I think deep down inside you were. <laughs> this is what you've always wanted to be." And I go, "Maybe, you know." But I had some I had some little old church ladies I was channeling that I remember. <laughs> Is it to uh, take uh, something uh, unique 
uniquely special for for you to to do film versus stand up? Uh, it took a lot of adjustment, you know, especially now the the movie we filmed that I I, I helped write and starred in, which uh, is called is called Don't uh, what's it Roll with it Roll with it We had changed the name two or three times, you know. Uh, Roll with it is the is the name of it, and it's it's all done here in Ashland City. When I first wrote it, when David and I first wrote it. And a friend named Martha Bolton, we all got together and said, hey, here's a movie idea. And my husband was so funny. And we wrote it that I was a Walmart greeter that had to win the karaoke contest because my house has fallen in a sinkhole. And I was on the movie set of Selfie Dad uh, when one of the directors said, have you ever toyed with writing a movie around your persona? And I go, oh, yeah, my husband and I wrote this movie, you know, and I just I just threw it out there. And he goes, oh, I have to read that. <laughs> he just thought that was the funniest premise. Well, so funny, when we were started putting it together, we couldn't get Walmart on, on board because evidently they're picky about who wears their vest. And so we had to change it to, a, I was going to be a waitress at Car Cracker Barrel. Well, we couldn't get Cracker Barrel on board. So we, but we wrote it that I was a waitress at the Biscuit Barrel and I have to win <laughs> a karaoke contest, at, which you were the judge of. And, um, and because my house is in back taxes. And so... That was, you know, a much more feasible way to record it and do it. But in the midst of doing that, what I realized, um, you know, when I zipped in and do a Hallmark movie here and there, you just zip in, you do your part, and you zip out. This was every single day, sometimes from 5 in the morning until 10 o'clock at night. And we filmed it. Luckily, I was blessed because the deal was I'd want to do this movie, but I want to sleep in my own bed every night. I don't want to go to a movie lot. I don't want to go, you know, to California or Utah or all these places they film movies. And um, and so we did it here in my little town of Ashland City. But uh, it was hard work. And and what I discovered was there's no one to laugh at your lines. Everybody has to be very quiet, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And so, and I didn't have the funny role mm -hmm. of this movie. And I, my, my part was a little more of a, a serious, which that was kind of fun. My part was very much Shonda Pierce, mm -hmm. uh, the woman, mm -hmm. instead of Shonda Pierce, the comedian. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and that was kind of good. And, but it was also easy. I, I drew a lot of Bonnie, the character Bonnie. She's a lot of me in there you know she, mm -hmm. she's a little more on the sensitive side and the apprehensive side of, of revealing herself to people um the, the relationship that bonnie had with her son was very much like my relationship with my son is learning to let him go and let him grow up and let him be his own person and so that was kind of a interesting thing and then when i get nervous my voice gets higher <laughs> and whinier <laughs> And my lips get looser, you know, <laughs> I'm not thinking and I'll just blurt stuff out or laugh at something inappropriately. I'm terrible about that. And so my pastor was around a lot. <laughs> what the sound man probably really heard that nobody else heard. <laughs> I'll probably lose my career. <laughs> you know, it was, um, there were so many little things like that I had to remember. And then just the, the hostess of, uh, in me. You're in my little town. I would constantly, you know, what? Are you getting enough food? Did you find something? To eat? You know, <laughs> can I help? With, you know, go shopping. You know, I wanted to just take care of everybody. And my manager finally pulled me aside one day, going, "You just concentrate on being Bonnie. You don't have to take it. You're not the caterer. You know." <laughs> so that was all of that was such an adjustment. I'm I don't view myself as the movie star type. But people around you want you to be one. They want they want you to demand something. You know, they want you to. <laughs> you, you didn't ask for red M and M's. No, I, no, you know, and I, it was like weeks in before I realized I could. <laughs> mm. And then I was like, it was too okay, late. I could get used to this. Yeah, <laughs> this right. But movie making it's different. You don't have instant gratification. You know, that's what's beautiful about my job. I can tell you immediately if my crowd is liking the night or not. But at least you know. I won't know how, what people think about these movies till they hit. I, I'm excited to see what they think about Michael Jr.'s movie, Selfie Dad. I have to wait till Father's Day to see what people's reactions are online, if they put a review up there, you know. And I won't know my movie. I'm not sure when it will be released. So, you know, you just you have to wait. We have so many things happening, so many things that are going to be changing, so many things we don't know what to uh, expect. I mean... Uh, you know, California just 
opened up production yesterday. Wow, good. Uh, good. There's a couple of series I need to see the next episode. <laughs> yeah, Ca- Ca- California has ne- California's now opened up production, and um, but I, I started reading these changes that are required. For example, you have to have social distancing, and there's no kissing, <laughs> so you can't have like a love scene. You can't have any. It has to be C- CGI. Oh, great. Look, I finally get a chance to be a movie star, and we're not allowed to have any kissing. That's just my luck. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. Can you imagine? Hey, wait, hold on. I just thought of something. Can you imagine? <laughs> Let's jump ahead a little bit. Okay. okay. That's hilarious. Christmas. Yes. <laughs> You're not allowed to sit on Santa's lap. <laughs> you can't. No mistletoe. <laughs> out, mistletoe is outlawed now. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, they looted Macy's, so there is oh, no yeah, Santa there Claus. Is no, there's no Macy's Day Parade. You can't even have a parade, Rob. Or a parade takes three days because all the floats have to be <laughs> six miles apart. <laughs> the band is one long line of people instead of a marching band. <laughs> it takes three days to get through a parade now because everybody has to spread out. <laughs> Oh my wait, wait, God. you know what? I think that that is your next. We're on that, to something. No, no, no. That, that's the gig we have to do the video on demand. It's how the world's going to change. Quarantine Christmas. Quar- quarantine, <laughs> exactly. Of course, you got to do it like right away because if you if you think through all this, by the time it comes out in a week, yes, the 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 WHO will change its mind fourteen oh, times. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, did we did we say COVID? What we really meant was yeah, yeah right. We really were talking about Corona beer. We weren't talking. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? The last oh, about two days before quarantine, I did the Opry, and I made a joke when I went out. <laughs> of course, you know, I'm sure Baptist hated me for it, but I forget that it's on national radio. So you know, I just but I just said thank you for coming to Nashville. You know, that's part of when you go to the Opry, you're so glad to see everybody that comes to Nashville to hear country music. And I said, you guys heard about this coronavirus? And I said, I, I don't know about all that. I read online, 49% of the world is afraid to drink Corona beer right now. And everybody laughs, you know, I go, Corona beer. Everybody go get a beer and stop being afraid. <laughs> then I, I get a text from my pastor. Did you just tell the world to go drink beer? <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. People were afraid to drink Corona beer because they hear about <laughs> coronavirus. And I'm like, oh my start. What if what if it was all about beer this whole time? <laughs> my mother said everything leads to beer. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so so um what are your uh, what are you looking forward to in the year ahead for you? What are you what are you Ooh. praying for for yourself? For yourself. Well, I I have there's some, I have, uh, my always my number one prayer request is the happiness of my children, you know, and I have, I have a, a, you know, a broken relationship with one of my kids that I hope continues on a mending path, and I think it will, you know, it's slowly shown some light, you know, um, I pray for my son to get like, <laughs> always go, I want to die broke, so he has to get a job, so if <laughs> <laughs> And he knows I'm joking, and he's a film editor, so, you know, quarantine, he sent me the funniest picture, a meme of himself, saying, this is me, the first day of quarantine, and then he sent the same picture, this is me, the last day of quarantine, it's the same picture, he, he's in an editing suite somewhere in his home, he doesn't, you know, he doesn't leave house anyway, but, um, but so always my prayer request is for the, the health and well-being and spiritual well-being of my children, there's some things I'd like to accomplish so that if, when and if quarantine ever happens again, that financially I've gotten myself together a little bit better. <laughs> you know, those are the things I work on personally, finding out, uh, you know, how to do this and that, you know, uh, as far as what retirement's going to look like. I I don't, you know, this is terrible probably, but I, I, I wrote out a list of things I dreamed of a chance to get to do. Always just wanted to be on the Grand Ole Opry, you know, because I grew up in Nashville, so... That was just a big deal. Well, I've been on the Opry like 50 times, you know, so I'm so blessed. I should have shot a little higher, you know. So now my list is I'd like to be a member of the Grand Ole Opry. I don't know that that'll ever happen because I'm a comedian, not a country music singer. But, but you know, I have little, I have little things like that, career goals 
would like to see this book published and finished and re well received. <laughs> I'd like to not get sued for talking about everybody. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be nice, you know. My dream, you know, I love what you do, David, but I would love it. I, you know, I think what the retirement for me or getting off the road a little more for me is I'd, I'd like a talk show. I've been doing some online stuff with Gary Chapman, who used to have a talk show. On TNN. On, on TNN mm -hmm. for years. Mm -hmm. And he has a real good ability. He's a good listener, and he's teaching me how to do that. That's a gift that you have, and you're really good at that. You have a way of listening to everything that I'm saying, and I already can see where your mind's working of going, oh, that leads to the next question and the next question, and to, also then to keep the, the person focused. Mm -hmm. That's an art. Mm -hmm. That's a gift <laughs> that well, I don't have yet because I just ramble. <laughs> Without you to rein me in. <laughs> no, you'd be great at it. You'd be great at it because you, you pick up on what people are saying and you just go with it. Yeah. Yeah. But and I that, like to do it in person. I don't like the radio, the podcast. I love that. I love for you to do it because I like to get on the treadmill and listen to you every day. Yeah. I like to see the person. Mm -hmm. Plus, that'll make me Oh, lose. I do too. That'll force me to lose I, weight. I, 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 you know, <laughs> dur during this, dur during this uh, lockdown thing uh, that, that's gone on, I know uh, the world has sort of taken to uh, Zoom and Skype and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And up until February or yeah. March of this of this year, I would very rarely do a Skype interview. Yeah. I mean, I think I did maybe two or three in like seven wow. or eight years. Wow. And I'm just saying, look, if it's not worth their time to sit in front of me yes. or for me to go to them, then forget about it. You yeah, know, because you everybody want to see their face. Well, I They're... want to see their face, and 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 you don't you don't get that rapport like we have when you're sitting across from somebody. I agree. Right? I totally agree. And not only that, but these people that do these Skype interviews, they tend to oh, this is my interview day. I'm going to do 47 interviews back to back, and by the time they get to you, you're like number 36. Yeah, and they're you know, worn out. They're wore out. Yeah, right. Absolutely. So, I love what we do here, and yeah, I would highly encourage you to to do it the same way if you ever have the opportunity to do it. Yeah. Now, you know, now if you get, um, of course, I know you hang out with uh, President Trump, so you're, you're going to get to do a one on one. <laughs> I you know. don't know me, about that. Me, me, I, I'd do the Skype probably, but but you know, if, <laughs> if 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 you if you have the opportunity to do it, absolutely do it one on one. There's nothing. I like, like that, it. and I like I like the visual of it. I'd like to, you know, I. I would like there to be a great competition for the view. Yeah. I would like to see that there would be a great competition for a lot of the entertaining and yet. Could you believe how long that thing has stayed on the air? Gosh. Oh, I my know. gosh. And they're, running, they're running out of moderate conservatives to, to be on their show. You know, they, they don't last long. You know, um, it is. Uh, have, I, you, have you ever been on that? Oh, yeah. yeah have times. you ever guest hosted? No, I never guest hosted. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I barely made it out with my skin on. I remember the first time I was ever on there, Whoopi Goldberg. I was, I didn't know she has a little bit of a phobia. She don't like to be hugged or touched. Well, I'm a Southern person. I just walked in the room, threw my arms around her and said, oh my goodness, I just love you. And, and she was like so stiff as a board. And she goes, really? I mean, she just thought I was being so hokey or I think is how I felt. And I said, no, really, I do. And she goes, but you're that Christian. And I go, but you're still a brilliant comic. You know, I said, it's not a lot of things. There's some things you don't, that you say that I couldn't say, but girl, you're fun. You know, I just try to deflect it and go, but girl, you're funny, you know, because I always think Christians are going to be so judgmental or whatever. And she goes, when was the last time you saw me work? And I think she was really trying to call me out on it. And I said, oh, you know that video you did? And you did it in the round, and that was brilliant. And you would have to deliver the punchline to this side, but as you walk, you, the, the, you know, the, the setup was over here, and you did, and you engaged that entire audience, and that's hard to pull off doing stand-up comedy in the round, you know. And I've had to do it a few times. It's not. A, she had this look on her face, yeah, <laughs> that like she couldn't believe I yeah. really did. Yeah, yeah. Watch her, and I really did care about her artistry. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah, her language is rough, you know, and I think that really gained rapport with her. Yeah. And so it was so funny because then when we got on the show, the first thing she said it, on the camera. I thought, oh, good, we've made friends now. But the minute they pushed record and we went live, you know, this is the view. First thing she said, I don't know why you call yourself a Christian comedian. What's the difference between my crowd and yours? And the first thing I could think of was a two drink minimum is the first thing that comes to mind. <laughs> <laughs> and she, then she chuckled. And so I think she finally got, okay, she's for real. She's for real, you know. 
So that was kind of fun. And then I was on there again one time about uh, interviewing about, uh, it was not long after Robin Williams had died. And it's funny, they were looking for all the comedians that have been depressed, <laughs> which is most of us, you know. <laughs> but uh, then I had a chance to talk about some meaty, m meatier issues um, as, far, as far as being a comedian. But yeah, I've, I've done it twice. And it, it's been a long, long time. I don't think I would ever get invited again. You know, when you come out for Trump, it, it, it puts a halt on a lot of things. And sadly, and I feel so bad for my sweet manager who's worked so hard to get me to come a long way, baby. And then someone asked me blankly, are you for, who are you voting for for president? And like a blonde, I didn't know it was going to be a big deal. And I said, oh, I like Donald Trump. You know, I think he's edgy. He's not a politician. He's certainly not my spiritual leader. But, man, I think he's going to go to Washington and clean, you know, clean up the house. And, and then went on with the rest of the conversation. Well, that hit. And you would have thought my whole world exploded. I lost 75, I think it was no, I lost 25,000 followers in one day mm. on Facebook. That then, then I gained about 78,000. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, once they so found it, out. It starts balancing out. And then I, I had the chance to meet him. I've, I've been around him. And, man, you're right. He's. <laughs> I'm like a lot of people, please get him to stop tweeting. You know? <laughs> and yet... The, you know, the staff asked me, would you send some funny tweets that he could see? <laughs> I'm like, oh, now, now some of those, you know. All right, give me, give me, as we get ready to wrap this up, give me one funny tweet. Oh, gosh. For Donald Trump. Oh, my Lord. Give me one that you're going to give to him going into the election, let's say. Well. Or let's say. See, I don't want to put my name to no, him because no, they're not, they're all the things the, I wish I could say hold on, on stage. Hold on. Before. As he goes into his like, first debate with yes. Joe Biden. <laughs> yes. That, the, the greatest thing that ever happened to Joe Biden was being quarantined to his basement. <laughs> yes. Now that he's out, his poll numbers are really going down. <laughs> Stay in the basement. Exactly. Yeah. One of my favorites was uh, it took Joe Biden being accused of being a sex offender for Hillary to finally endorse somebody. <laughs> Oh no! That was bad. That oh, was no. bad. Oh no! Oh no! Did you see the? Hold on, I gotta find it here. Oh good, good. There was a uh, the, uh, couple of days ago. I saw this on uh, Facebook, and uh, it was uh, Joe Biden coming out. Oh, here it is. Here, right here. I, I, oh, I want boy. you to know that I didn't make this up. This is uh, Joe Biden saying here. It's coming up here on the screen. Of something he said himself. Oh, no. See, Joe Biden is writing his material oh, Joe Biden says he needs a VP who can be president because I'm an old guy. I'm an old guy. That's what he's... <laughs> <laughs> See, you know what? It's really easy for me to write. I don't have to write anything. Joe Biden writes his own memes constantly. You know, it's... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my thing was uh, during during one of the quarantine moments, I sent in um, uh, all the women out there. You know, of course, mine mine goes to teams of people that will use them. You know, but one of them was uh, <laughs> during the quarantine. No one, no, the women can't get their hair done, which makes them a little safer around Joe Biden. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't sniff your hair as much <laughs> when you've been quarantined. <laughs> It's mean, I know. It's mean, it's mean, it's mean. But you know what? Good oh. Lord. I Boy, do I get the mean ones. I, you know, I can take people picking at me or saying something snarky. Right, right. <laughs> what I get mad at is when they start calling out, go, oh, you're not a Christian, or you're blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, what are, you going, what are you talking about? You know, it's like, oh, people, are, it's so mean. And here's the other thing. I said not long ago, there are a lot of forms of hate. Hate is hate. And those on on national media and those who say horribly nasty things about the president, that's hate. So if you're if you're tired of hate speech, you're the one that you you're the one that starts this. You say horrible things about each other. And violence is violence. You the when you respond with such hatred or or meanness, oh man, you ever get 
<laughs> somebody, some Christian artist was sat complaining because they had said something and lost a few followers. I go, you need to come read my Facebook post. You got to have some thick skin to be Shonda Pierce sometimes. It gets so mean and nasty. And I said, when you respond with that kind of hatefulness, you just threw a brick into someone's heart. That is no different than these angry, rioting mobs. We mob people on Facebook. We mob people on social media. We say horrible things like a, a group of rioters coming into your town when you start jumping on somebody with such unkindness. We have fed the fire that we are complaining about out there on the streets. That's good. That's yeah. good. That's good. There you go. Well, we've solved well, all sweetie, the Well, sweetie, thank problems. you so much for this time. This has been fun. It's fun hanging with you here at I your love, place. I love talking with you, though. Yeah, it's It's fun. like I don't have to see my therapist today now. <laughs> <laughs> Let me go to the ATM and get some money. <laughs> I'm just the opposite. It's just the opposite for me now that I've been with you for an hour. I have to go see my therapist. <laughs> Well, there you go. We try to keep branches counseling centers going. <laughs> oh, oh, that's great. That's good stuff. Oh, my stars. Miss Shonda Pierce, everybody. What, what, can you, what else can we say about Miss Shonda Pierce? When I was sitting there uh, next to her, first of all, I have to admit, and... I've been really careful about this social distancing stuff. Mm -hmm. All right. I've been careful You've about. You've been a little anal about I've it. I've been a little, and, and, and I do wear a mask out in public. You do. Whether I go to the grocery store, of course, Costco, we, we have to wear one anyway. And you have that grill thing on your mask. What is that thing? No, it's, well, <laughs> it's my Darth that? Vader mask. Okay, because it looks, I, I see yours, I see a lot. I'm like, what is that? Yeah, we shouldn't do that on the air. You shouldn't do that anywhere. <laughs> No, well, they're very. Yours is a. It, it really is. Yours is kind of like uh, the Mac Daddy mask. I pull up to her place, and she lives in a penthouse. You know, she she's at the top of a she, of a big built high rise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Life's been good to her, and and uh, so I walk down the hall. I ring her doorbell. She opens it up, and by golly, I here I was going to be Mister like, uh, hey, how you doing, Shonda? from a distance and she just comes up to me and gives me the biggest hug and i'm like oh well <laughs> yep that sounds like shonda you know i used to be her i used to live um in that same building yeah. so she and i would meet in did our you, pjs and th just hang out that's until you got kicked out no i didn't get kicked out i moved out the drive just got to be too much for me wait, but wait, I, wait, wait wait it's like 20 minutes from downtown now. it was too much i had to fly out a lot it was not it was about 45 minutes to the airport all the, every time it just got to be too much but i do miss it You're oh such god a i love jet that setter. place i'm a jet setter <laughs> But we had good times, Shonda and I over there. She's a great person. So I am not surprised she was hugging you. And, you know, Shonda's clever by the blood, David. We, we, had, we had a great time hanging out together. She made me laugh a lot. It, it was well worth the drive from here to there. And by the way, it took me about 30 minutes. So I don't want anybody listening to this thinking, oh, my gosh, she drove across the country to see Shonda. Although I, I would drive probably an hour. I, no, I think I, I think with Shonda, I'd probably drive a couple, a couple hours. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's where, and you know, I think some people do. The, That's yeah. why her shows sell out all the time because people come from all over because there is nothing like a live Shonda Pierce show. So be sure to check out her movie uh, along with Michael Jr. and uh, the movie is called Selfie Dad. That's it for this edition of CIA Contagious Influencers of America, the podcast from the producers of Keep the Faith. I'm Victoria Robinson. And I'm David Sams. Be sure to rate and review us wherever you get your podcasts. And remember to go out there and live that life in living color because it sure is a heck of a lot more interesting than living it in black and white. See you next time.